Hi, I'm Eric with Home Network Central, and this will be about the basics of IP addresses. If you look at the network settings of any of your devices on your network, you'll probably notice there are three different things that look like three separate IPs um, in the settings. You'll have your IP address, you have the subnet mask, and you have the default gateway. The first one is the IP address. For example, 192.168.1.10 is the IP address of one device on your network. It has four octets. So for example, in this one, 192.168.1.10, there are four separate octets. 192 is the first octet, 168 is the second octet, and then one is the th third octet, and 10 is the fourth octet four octets of an IP address. Another important part is every IP address is unique on your network. So for example, 192.168.1.10 could be the IP address of one device on your network. The next one could be 192.168.1.11. And then you can have .12 and .x and so on. For each octet in an IP address, the lowest number it can be is zero, and the highest number it can be is 255. For example, down here, 192.168.1.256, 256 is over 255, so that is not a valid IP address. That's not a possible IP address. However, 192.168.1.200, all of those are within 0 to 255, so that is a valid IP address. The subnet mask, for example, is 255.255.255.0. The purpose of the subnet mask is to separate your network ID from your host ID in the IP address. So for example, if you have a network ID of 255.255.255.0, the first three octets with the 255 in it represent the network ID. And then the zero represents the host ID. So that means our network and our host are both are separated depending on what numbers are in there. So for example, when you pair that subnet mask, 255.255.255.0, with the IP address of 192.168.1.10, that means that our network ID of this IP address is 192.168.1 because it matches with the where the 255s are located in the subnet mask. And the host ID, which is the part that represents each individual client, is what is where the zero is located in the subnet mask. So 192.168.1.10 matched with that subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 means that all the hosts are separated by that last octet. And that is typically what you'll find on most home network routers. There is more that goes into the subnet mask involving math and binary. Uh, that's outside the scope of this video, but just so you know, there is more that can go into this other than just the number 255. But that, again, that's outside the scope of this video. This is a representation of your home network. The circle with the X represents your router, and everything on the LAN port and on the Wi-Fi are all included on your network. So the LAN means local area network. That's where your network is and all your devices. Let's say this is a smartphone, this is a laptop, and this is another smartphone. So on your router, you have LAN ports and you have a WAN port. The router separates these two networks. The wide area network, represented by WAN up here, and the local area network, the LAN. So WAN port and LAN port separate the networks. In this network, we're going to use the network ID of 192.168.1.0 and the subnet mask to represent that will be 255.255.255.0. .255 .255 .0. 
So because we're making that our subnet mask, that means the first three octets of our IP address is 192.168.1. That is our network ID. And the last octet is the host ID. So when you match the 255s up with the IP address, it tells you that the first three octets are the network ID. And the first number in that network, which is zero, is, is reserved for the network ID. So that means the first number is kind of like the name of the network. The first number is zero. So that is not a usable IP address. 192.168.1.0 is not usable because that represents the network ID or kind of like the name of the network. Another IP that's not usable is the very highest IP, which would be 192.168.1.255 is also not usable because that's reserved for a broadcast, which means if you send something to the broadcast of a network, it sends it to every, every IP on the network. So 192.168.1.0 is not usable and 192.168.1.255 is not usable. Everything else in between 0 and 255 will be usable as clients on our network. While this is not a requirement, it is typical for the very first IP on your on your uh, IP scheme for your network is used for the router. Again, you can use any one of the IP addresses you want that's within that network for your router, but it's just typical to use the very first IP. So that's why usually you'll see 192.168.1.1 be assigned to the router automatically when you turn the router on. Again, it's not a requirement that it, that your router be that IP, but it, it's just a kind of a, a common thing that's done. So this router is pretty much creating this network by having this port with the interface assigned 192.168.1.1. That's the IP address of your LAN of your LAN. And it's saying that the size of this network is 255.255.255.0. So that is defining everything that's in this circle, everything that's in your network. This IP and subnet mask defines what the rest of this stuff is going to be. Now that we're adding devices to the LAN ports and to the Wi-Fi of this router, they each need to have a unique IP address. Let's just say this box here represents a smartphone. The smartphone needs a unique IP address to communicate with the other devices on this network. So it's going to take 192.168.1.10. And let's say this is a laptop. This laptop's going to take 192.168.1.11 because it also needs to be unique. This other phone also needs to be unique. So it's going to take 192.168.1.12. The first three octets are the same on every device because that represents the network. We know that we have 192.168.1 as the network because if we look at the router, it says 192.168.1 is the first three parts of the octet and the 255.255.255 represent the network portion of the IP address. So if you log into your router and it says something different than 192.168.1, then all of your devices also need to match that network ID part. For example, you could see 192.168.100, and that would mean all of your other devices on this network also need to have a 100 instead of that one. But as long as the network mask looks like this, 255.255.255, the part that really matters is that the first three octets match the first three octets over here. And then everything else in the last octet just needs to fit between one and 254. Again, it's customary to make, the to make your first IP the router IP, and the rest can be anything in between one and 254. I didn't start at two, I just st decided to start at 10. So the first device is dot 10, the second device is dot 11, the third device is dot 12 and so on. As you add more devices to your network, it would be the same thing. You just continue on down the line. It's important that your subnet mask 
that is on the router is the same on all your devices. So your subnet mask is going to say 255.255.255.0 on all the devices that are in this network because that's what's telling them that they're in this network. That's how it is identified. So what about the default gateway? What is the default gateway? What the default gateway is, is the IP address of your router. And actually what it is, is the way for your network devices to get outside of your network. So for example, if this phone wants to get on the internet, it has to know, okay, the internet is not on my LAN. I can't, I can't send traffic to this laptop. I can't send traffic to 192.168.1.11 and expect to get Google because this is all in the same network. The default gateway is the way that your devices get out of the network in order to get to the internet. That is what the default gateway is. So for example, 192.168.1.10 on this phone would be the IP address. 255.255.255.0 would be the subnet mask. And the default gateway would be 192.168.1.1 because that's the router. In order to get to the internet, where do I go to get to the internet? You go to the default gateway. You go to the router. That's how you get to the internet. That's what the default gateway means. So all the devices will have the same subnet mask in this network, and all of the devices will have the same default gateway. Again, the default gateway is how you get outside of this network, which is the router. It wouldn't do any good to make your default gateway this laptop or this phone. You could set it as that, but you're not gonna get anywhere because the setting your default gateway as one of those IPs only sends you to that device. This device also needs a way to get out to the internet. So this would have a default gateway of 192.168.1.1. Your WAN or your wide area network port that goes to your modem, that's where you get the internet from. They will also have its own IP address. It'll be something, it could be anything. I just put x.x.x.x .x .x because it's not the same as your local area network. It will not start with 192.168. anything. It won't start with anything like that. It will be a public IP address so you can get on the internet. So anything going out of your network that goes through your router, when it leaves out your router, it will have a source IP address of whatever your WAN is. So when you're on the internet, everything is communicating as this public IP, which will be, again, something different. It's important to note that your default gateway is your LAN port on your router. It is not the WAN port. The default gateway is always, how do you get outside of this network? And it's always the LAN IP address. Just to go through another example, I added the default gateway to all these settings. So you'll see, remember in the beginning, we discussed that every device will have three settings to do with their IP address. It'll have their IP address, which is the red one. It'll have a subnet mask, which is the blue one. And it'll have a default gateway, which is the black one. And you'll notice the IP addresses on every device, they're within the network, 192.168.1, and they're all unique. The last octet is unique in every single one of them, 10, 11, 12. The default gateway tells this device, how do I get outside of this network? So the phone knows it needs to go to this, to 192.168.1.1 to get outside of the network, to get to the internet. The laptop also knows that's where it needs to go. This phone also knows it needs to go to that to get outside of the network. And those are the three settings that are used to configure a network interface on their device. If I was going to add more devices to my network or add, say, another router or whatever, and you, you wanna ask, you wanna go online and say, hey, what should my subnet mask be? Or what should my default gateway be? You can always log into the router to find out that information. You log into the router, you find out what the, the router's address is, the LAN address, and you find out what the subnet mask is in the router, and that is what you would transfer over to all your devices. So if you're having some kind of issue and you wanna know what should my subnet mask be, 
you can find that out by going to the router that they're connecting to and getting that information from the router and transferring it over. So the router IP address is 192.168.1.1 and the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. So obviously you would take that subnet mask just like it is in the router and copy it exactly to your device. And then you go back to the router and say, okay, the router is 192.168.1.1. And what all I know is I don't want it to be the same IP address as the router. So I can't use 192.168.1.1. So if I was gonna configure another device, I would go over here, I would put in my router address for the default gateway, I would copy the exact same subnet mask from the router, and that's my subnet mask, and then the IP is just something that's not the same as the router. It could be 192.168.1.2, or 192.168.1.254, or anything in between there, as long as it's not taken. If an IP address is taken on two devices. If you do something by mistake and make two devices the same IP address, they're gonna have problems communicating on the network. It's just gonna cause problems. It's gonna be an IP address conflict and that's gonna have great problems on your network. That concludes my video. If it helped you out, please give me a like. If you wanna see more videos like mine, consider subscribing to Home Network Central. Thank you very much for watching.